Baseball lost to Dallas Baptist. I don't know how we keep doing that. We magically lose to Dallas Baptist or Oral Roberts every year. It's okay, though, because it's a positivity segment. We're not talking about baseball right now. We're talking about the other sport that we're really dominating in, and that is softball. So here we are around the corner, part two. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State. My name is Cody Stovall. Thank you very much for making this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. We're available on all the podcasting uh, platforms as well as YouTube. I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to roll right into uh, part two with our guest, Mr. Avin Fippen. All right, you're back. Hello. All right, so the reason we had to kind of split this up a little bit is because um, we hadn't had the opportunity to talk a whole lot about the youngsters. And I definitely wanted to do that because you don't see them a lot, right? Because of how talented we are. But if you don't know all of the names and then you're, you're, you're catching a game, sometimes it can throw you for a little bit of a loop. So I do want to talk about some of the youngsters that we have coming back. So you mentioned... You mentioned lot already multiple times. So let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and, and, and start there. Why has Katie Lott been the one that has got the most looks out of the freshman kind of early on in, in your personal opinion? Yeah, Katie is special. I mean, you can tell if you watch her being a freshman. She's kind of come in. She played a little bit of right field, and she made a diving catch a few games ago and she looks really good in the outfield but he really I think you know he's trying to be deep in our lineup you know not just saying like oh we have nine girls for sure but who else can I throw in there whenever you know I'm needing maybe I'm needing a new look uh we're down I need someone fresh off the bench who hasn't seen her who just wants to go out there and hit the ball um, and he's kind of turned to Katie a lot for that. You saw it in the Clearwater tournament. She hit a walk-off um, yes. single or double there, too. Um, so she's kind of been clutch in situations. I'm, I don't know necessarily. I couldn't tell you why I think maybe he chose Katie. I mean, I think power. I think she's kind of got some power right. being a freshman. Um, she hits the ball well. She sees the ball very well. Um, but yeah, she's definitely. Is that because the ball's yellow or? <laughs> yeah she just has quick hands uh <laughs> no um and you know and we have a starting freshman on the two starting freshmen on the lineup technically you know we have red shirt she's a fresh red shirt freshman she's not a true freshman it's michaela wark you know our yeah. first baseman our four hole and then talent edwards who just turned 18 like i think maybe about a few months ago yeah who literally skipped her graduated early and came to play for coach g and so she's been amazing and she could have played anywhere in america yeah anywhere. she definitely she probably could have and, and probably started just like she's doing at osu yes. yes yeah so she's a threat for sure left fielder she's a little little stud out there and she hits the ball well and she's hit a few bombs this year too so you mentioned um about how you know sometimes when when coach kenny gasky's just trying to change it up a little bit, maybe um, that, you know, he will, he will change the lineup. He'll, he'll engage a shot in the arm occasionally. And the other day uh, he did it again against Baylor and Claire Tim. And it was the first time that I was really kind of uh, looking up some of the information from her. So kind of, uh, if you could give us a little bit of a rundown, cause she's again, she's a very, very young 18 year old who probably didn't come with any anticipations of, of starting, but to be able to get some time in major moments, uh, what's, what's something that she kind of offers that gives coach Kenny Gajewski that, that comfort in putting her in there. Yeah. I mean, like kind of like Katie Watt, she's been 
kind of clutch in situations that they've needed her. And just, again, if you know any softball players or baseball players or coaches or whoever, if you've been around the sport, you know, sometimes you have batters that, you know, they're still good hitters. It's just they're going through a slump. And sometimes bringing somebody in who hasn't seen live pitching really at all, there's it adds something to it. And it works out for the most part for girls that are just coming fresh off the bench. And that's kind of been Claire a little bit like Katie. She's just been clutch in some situations. And I'm sure, you know, coming in as a freshman, she has all those nerves, you know, especially like being on the number two team, like, Oh my gosh, Holy crap. Like I get to see the field my freshman year, which you think, you know, maybe I won't get to cause you have all these seniors and, mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's just Coach G's way of also saying, like, I need you guys to see time this year. I need you to see the field. I need you to see live pitching. Because who knows? We might need you down the road in Super Regionals or in the Big 12 Tournament or the World Series or for next year. Like, I want you to be um, – I want you to have that experience now as a freshman so that way you can be here as a junior and be comfortable in your spot instead of being, like, oh, it's my first year starting off the bench instead of having a little bit of that experience. So I think that's kind of his his thoughts going into that is just, you know, giving these girls some experience and some time on the field so they can, you know, really be ready for bigger situations down the road or for the next couple of years. And hopefully, hopefully they stay long periods of time. But, yeah. So you mentioned Michaela Wark. And, and, and I do have to ask, because coming into the season, I'll be honest with you, uh, I – very much overlooked her. Like, I, I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have her penciled in to do a whole heck of a lot. And I, I looked, I looked the other day. I'll look again because I don't like being wrong, but I'm pretty sure she was like sixth in the big 12 in, in put outs right behind Taylor Tuck, who was number five in put outs. If, yeah. If I... Yeah. She is. I think that I overlooked her for sure, too, coming into the season. And I think she kind of fought with Morgan Wynn at that first base spot because we saw Morgan at the beginning of the year kind of playing first base. And I think Morgan is still a fantastic first base. We saw her, if you watched her at the beginning of the year, I mean, she was doing splits at first base to get – doing the splits in the dirt. It was crazy. I think her and Michaela kind of – um, kind of fought for first base there for a little while. And I think right. Coach G just maybe liked work there better. And she's just a good bat in the lineup too. Being number four, she has so many RBIs. And I know she has a few bombs under her belt too. But she's just great in our fourth spot. And she makes sense at first base right now. And like I said, and one good thing about OSU is we're deep. And if we feel like she's not doing well, I you're just as comfortable putting Morgan out there at first base too. Okay, so – Morgan is not one of the young guns, right? She's a, a graduate senior. If I yeah, she's quickly, a, right? she's a super, one of the super seniors, <laughs> and she's got to be a pretty humble individual because for being a super senior, she 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 gets a lot of playing time. Like, don't don't get that confused. But she also gets sub for quite a bit. You know what I mean? So yeah, she does for sure. That's got to be. I don't know. I just. The, the testament to how good of good of a person she, she must be because she comes oh, yeah. back for an additional year, and she's not even getting all of the reps. So yeah, and she was a transfer out of Kansas. So I mean, and she said that when she came on our our podcast, I think is our third episode. She she came and she said, you know, I was a transfer from Kansas, and I mean, we weren't, you know, what really a force to be reckoned with being because Kansas softball, I mean, that's no hate to them, but she's like, I mean, so even coming to the program like this and getting an opportunity like it, she's like, I'm just grateful for it anyway. And she's like, I knew coming for, especially going into this year, she said, I knew that there was a chance I wouldn't be on the lineup. And she has been on the lineup for almost every game. She's our yeah. sixth or seventh girl. And she has, she, her and Naomi, I think are right up there with home runs. Like, She's a power hitter. Morgan is like, she's going to hit the ball hard or she's not going to hit it at all. Like she is a power hitter. And yeah. So I know she told us that coming in, you know, being my last year, she's like, I just learning to let it go and realize that 
just to enjoy it and to be even happy that I even get a fifth year because it's crazy yeah. that they get a fifth year and just enjoy being on a World Series team. And if I'm in the lineup, I am, and I'll try and use it. And if I'm not, then that's just how it goes, part of being a number two team. I mean, every spot is is, is awesome. being fought over. So another one that's not necessarily viewed as – I don't know, a, a major, major contributor contributor on a daily basis, but you've seen her name pop up quite a bit um, throughout the course of the season. And every time her name pops up, you got to kind of go do some digging. But uh, Hayden Sokolowski, what's what's the Sokolowski? I hope I said that right. Um, what? What's yeah, the, I can't say her last name. <laughs> what's the story on her? Like, I know she's a speed demon. I know she's from. Flower Mound, Texas, which is the uh, same spot as, as our main man for the Celtics, Marcus Smart, right? But yeah. um, other than the speed, you know, we, we don't get a lot of eyes on. So what, what's something that she brings to the table uh, other than just being an absolute burner? Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about her. I'm going to be honest. That just shows how I need to pay attention no, more. But she – I. Right now, what she brings to the table is her speed, in my opinion. Like, I I think that she's just our speed girl because, again, this lineup is just so deep. Like, we can – because she can do yeah. it so many different ways, and I just don't think that she's maybe better than some of our seniors or – because if, if you're a freshman and you're playing right now, you're good. Like, we know you're good. But, right. Um, yeah, I think it's just – we're just too stacked right now. I don't want to – I sound like I'm conceding, I'm conceded, but like you can say that this year, like we're just, and he uses her speed when he can, you know, running bases and all that good stuff, which we need. And that base running is a big deal. Like yes. if you don't know, like you yeah. have, especially in softball, like it's so fast, like you have to be paying attention, watching your coach. Like, so to have, to be fast is definitely a good thing to have. And, that's really what she brings right now. And hopefully that'll change next year. Maybe she'll get more playing time. I don't know, but yeah. Can you beat Chelsea Alexander in a foot race? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. We just, we are, we all know the answer to that. <laughs> Definitely no, not. No, that girl's quick. No. Just, just watch the, she's got receipts. Just look at them. Okay. That, that is fair. That is fair. Yeah. She's, <laughs> She's got she's got some moves. Well, I remember last year when we beat OU for the Big Twelve title, uh, which we have to remind people as often as possible. Okay, um, <laughs> but when we did that, like they were talking about Chelsea Alexander on the broadcast, and they were talking about how Coach Kenny Gaeski could use her speed in certain scenarios, and if this OU pitcher did X, Y, and Z, and then that pitcher did that exact thing, and then and then Chelsea Alexander got up to bat, and she. You know what I mean? She did exactly what she was supposed to do. It's just, it was funny how you could just kind of piece it together because last year's team, you, you could see the puzzle pieces come together per, pretty quickly on. And then as the season progressed, we, got, we, we were good, but the loss of Miranda Ellish really it put a damper on things going in the Big 12 tournament. So if something like that, God forbid, happens again this year, we do technically go four deep. So before I let you off the hook here, I do got to ask you, do you think Ivy Rosenberry is going to be able to put herself in a position to be an integral part of the team if if that does happen and we do need that fourth person to pull a Morgan Day and, and step up? Yeah, for sure. And I think she's done that a little bit this season too. If you look, I think. I think she's appeared in seven or eight games, something like that. And I think she only has one loss. So, I mean, her ERA technically is really good. And um, if John, the pitching coach, is trusting her enough for her to come out, then she's got to be decent because he's a very good pitching coach. And what he's done with Lexi this year is just her change up, like the different throws that she has. So Ivy, I think for sure – is definitely someone. And I think maybe they're like, well, we're still early on into the season. I wanted to give, I want to give a cock kill foil, um, just this experience at the beginning of the season season, yeah. just to, you know, really get those pitches, get those innings, like see, if, you know, first weekend of conference play, but knowing Ivy already has a little bit of, you know, experience under her belt. We can use her for 
since we're coming up on conference play, some more conference mm-hmm. games or, you know, to relieve during bigger situations. So, yeah, I think that she's definitely um, a good good thing for us to have in the bullpen behind the amazing, you know, stars we already are developing. Well, so we tonight we play Tulsa, right? Um, I would assume that this would be a good opportunity to throw – uh, somebody like an Ivy or even a Kyra, even though Kyra's coming off a little bit of short short week. Uh, I guess, would you rather see Ivy tonight or against Incarnate Word? Because let's say we got three game a three game stretch here. It's also Incarnate Word, Incarnate Word, and then I think is it is it uh, Ku? Yes, and then we are, have conference play with Ku. Uh, so are these next three games, we're going to see a good helping of, of Kyra and Ivy, I would assume. Um, or do you think we just continue to roll with the hot hands and we see a lot of Kelly and Lexi? I, that's hard because Tulsa is kind of salty sometimes and they've kind of given us a run for our money and they usually have pretty decent girls for, you know, we saw our coach. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, so Tulsa kind of gives us a run for our money, and I don't think that because she would like to see an upset so soon as at OC. So maybe I would like him to throw Kyra just for her to kind of redeem herself after Friday. I don't think she did bad by any Agreed. means, and just kind of see where she stands after you know, okay, this is what happened on Friday. How can you come back from that? But it's hard to say. I wouldn't be surprised if Kelly or Lexi gets their own either. Like, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I would like to see Kyra just to see kind of how she responds to her Friday night against Baylor. They're having the rest of the weekend off compared to the other pitchers. Yep. So, I, I'm kind of hoping it's Kyra. And, you know, we can still, if you know, if S hits the fan, they can just put in Maxwell or right. Kofoil or something. So. And that's what I would do simply because um, so one of the stats when I was looking up stats the other day that kind of caught me off guard was uh, the amount of innings pitched and Kelly's up there. Lexi's up there, but the OU pitchers are not like they didn't have, they didn't have a single pitcher in the top five most innings pitched. Um, So I find that I found that to be a little not perplexing, but concerning yeah, that. they've kind of taken Jordy Ball. If you remember her from last year, I mean, like she was kind mm-hmm. of their star. Right. They've kind of developed this thing where they'll put Starocco or Nicole May or uh, there's one other guy I can't remember and pitch them. And if they're doing well, let them ride it out. And if not, bring in Jordy for reliever. And it has worked really well for them. And it it might be something to be concerned about because. You have Jordy come in who's throwing upper 70s, like averaging that, throwing crazy off-speed pitches and stuff like that, coming in when you're most tired at the end of the game. Yeah, so OU has kind of got a cool thing going for their – they've got something worked out with their pitchers, that's for sure. So do you think this is the year that we chop down that tree or are they still still the, the, the king of the hill? It's hard. I, I do still think OU's dominant like they are, but I do think if any year we're going to be the year, OSU has the best chance this year so far because just how well hitting we are. And honestly, yeah. our defense is so good right now. And the only reason that OU would give us a run for our money, I think, is if they were hitting bombs off of our pitching. And which they can do, we would just our offense has to respond early. You know, we kind of have kind of have a little bit of a habit of waiting till later in the game before we score, or only scoring during one <laughs> inning. And so we would have to be like, I think if we play our best game against OU, then we could win. Yeah, I love it. So, well, I want we to can say only hope. <laughs> thank you very much. For, for jumping on the show. Uh, you came highly recommended by, uh, I heard you mention our buddy Shannon on, on, on your show the other day with Sydney Pennington. So I'll make sure to throw him a shout out as well. Yeah. He, he hit me up and he said, Hey man, you got to listen. You got to listen. These guys, these girls are awesome. You should, you should get them on your show sometime. And Shannon, 
He's um he's he's one of our resident softball guys. I I swear to you, every single morning I wake up to softball. Yeah, yeah. Shannon. He DMs me all the time. I love. It. He's always throwing like statistics and questions, and I'm like, I it makes me feel special. So I'm like, thank you, Shannon. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. So, yeah, good good people there. And um, you know, I, I saw you jumped on Twitter Space the other day. I had somebody uh, join the program last week, and we we're kind of talking about the the Twitter Spaces just because. It's good to get a lot of different OSU fans' perspectives. And one, one thing I will say, the difference between the Twitter spaces and other social media stuff is it's legitimate fans um, yeah. that, 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 that I enjoy. Because let's face it, sitting on your phone for a long time is not typically very fun, all right? I hate being on the phone. Except for when we're doing a space, but we'll talk about football, basketball, baseball, track, cross country, equestrian. We'll talk about the coaching situations, John Smith, the construction. We literally talk about a little bit of everything and it just, it makes it fun. So thank you very much for joining the show. Thank you for coming on the, the spaces. We, we hope to see more of you there. And um, thanks for having me. Thanks for reaching out. I know. appreciate it. Let Chelsea know that I, I, I might not foot race her, but we will uh, have you both back um, <laughs> on the season, maybe right around Bedlam time or, you know, there, towards the end of the season. We'll take another look at where we're sitting currently and, and how the Big 12 tournament looks because health is going to be a factor. For sure. Right? Yeah, I'll let her know. I know that she'd be excited to come do stuff like this because she loves interacting, so. I'll let her know. Maybe we can work something out for all of us to come on. I love it. We're just trying. We're just trying to build the castle as big as possible. You know what I mean? Exactly. I love it. Well, please do me a favor. Let the fine people out there know what you got cooking, how they can get a hold of you, and when the next episode is, and when it's going to drop, so they can catch it for the Cowgirl Corner Pod. Yeah, Cowgirl Corner Pod out every Tuesday night. Um, you can find that on Spotify or Apple underneath the Franchise Podcast Network. You can find Cowgirl Corner there every Tuesday. I'm up at the game tonight in Tulsa, and I'm hoping to be at OSU games as the year goes by. So definitely say hi to me. You can follow me on Twitter at capital A-U-B-Y-N, capital P-H-I-P-P-E-N. Follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Instagram under the same name. Always feel you know, message me whenever I love all the interactions. So all that to say, go Cowgirl softball. I love it. Awesome. So I have one more question. How often do you get called Aubrey or Auburn? Yeah. Okay. All the time. I get Aubrey, Auburn. I'm like, I don't even care anymore. I'm like, that's totally fine. Cause <laughs> Auburn is so weird. I know. No, I, I think it's I think it's awesome because it, it makes you it makes you unique and different already without all of the softball fun stuff. So good job. Tell Mama Bear. He's the one who came. To it's Mama my dad, Bear, actually. Mama Bear. Okay, they did good. He's he's not an Auburn fan, is he? No. If so, I'd have been like, oh, that's that's okay. yeah. No, nope. all I would see fans in this household. I love it. All righty. Well, Aubin, again, thank you very, very much. I cannot wait to have you on the program again. Everybody, you got to go check out the Cowboy Cor Cowgirl Corner. Yeah, it's a mouthful for everybody involved here. <laughs> um, the guests that she has on are amazing. And when you're this good at any sport, it's fun to keep up with. And we have to, you know, we have to dive into a little bit of everything on this channel. So if you want to get your your content for softball you gotta go through Aubin and chelsea all righty y'all that's all we got for this one stay tuned we're about to do a film breakdown on some of the defensive positions until then i love you all god bless go pokes until the next one i'll see y'all later <laughs>